Hey y'all, it's Terra Master. Gonna be talking about Jesse Anderson today, and because of that, I have to do this whole episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duels What's in the Bogix, where I predict the upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duel Duel Academy box in the Jesse Anderson voice, because we are talking about Jesse Anderson and his crystal bastes. So we have to start, of course, with the crystal-based ace monster that's also treated as an ultimate crystal card. I can't, I can't do it the whole episode. I lied. Anyway, guys, we have to start by talking about Rainbow Dragon because as I get into these card effects, I'm not going to be able to keep that accent up. I could have had enough practice with it, but obviously I don't. So let's go. Um, it, one important thing about this card that's going to come up a lot in some of these other card effects that I talk about is the fact that's always treated as an ultimate crystal card. So be careful of that little part right there other than that it has to be special summoned inherently by having seven crystal beast monsters with different names on the field or graveyard um and you can send all crystal beast monsters from your graveyard to give it a little more of an attack boost so it's already 4k and you can make it even stronger and then it has a, a slow effect ignition effect i think that's what they're called to banish all Crystal Beast monsters from your graveyard to shuffle all cards on the field into the deck, including itself. So it can be a field clearer if that's what you need, but it's a slow effect. There is a quick effect version of this, which we will talk about. But now let's talk about those seven Crystal Beast monsters that you need to get to Rainbow Dragon. First up is the best one, which is Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus. It is not only the best beater uh, itself, uh, just its pure attack power is the highest at 1700. But in addition to that, if it uh, every crystal beast will have this effect of when it's destroyed, you can place it face up in a spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell. So I'm not going to read that every time. But crystal beast sapphire pegasus, what makes this one so good, is that it when it's summoned, it's normal or special. You can place a Crystal Beast monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard face up in your spell and trap card zone. So usually this will be used at the start of the duel to go ahead and um, start putting Crystal Beast monsters from your deck onto your field and eventually hopefully getting them into the graveyard to clear room or whatever it is you need to do with that once it's on the field. And that helps you build up to your Rainbow Dragon or your other big plays. You've got Crystal Beast Topaz Tiger. This is a with effect and when it attacks a monster it is stronger than the Pegasus. So it becomes 2,000 only when it attacks, so not when it is attacked. So that's what Topaz Tiger is going for. It. Amber Mammoth is got the effect of when it's targeted for an attack, you can change the attack target. Not a good effect, but it could come up every now and then. Uh, Ruby Carmuncle's effect is essentially when it's special summoned from your spell and trap card zone, you special summon all other Crystal Beast monsters from your spell and trap card zone. So that's potentially good if you want to focus on the swarm the board with crystal beast strategy um you've got cobalt eagle which is not so great because you can just put a crystal beast card you control on top of the deck which is i guess okay for maybe recycling something like pegasus to use again but other than that this card is only going to be a one of and only purely to have the different name i think you've got emerald tortoise which uh gives you a 2k wall for your Crystal Beast deck, so it gives you the defensive power where Tiger and Pegasus give you the offensive power. Um, and once per turn, you can target a monster, you control that attack this turn and change the defense. So, I mean, it's it's a very niche effect again, but it could come up. And then finally, we have the Amethyst Cat, where it can attack directly, but it only does 600 damage based on that attack if it does do that. So, that's the Crystal Beasts in a nutshell and then we have a couple cards here that lucas actually suggested which can actually use those crystal beast in your spell and trap card zone to very good effect uh you have gravity crush dragon which sends a continuous spell card to the graveyard to target a monster and destroy a target so very good you can use your crystal beast as fuel to have gravity crush dragon remove monsters magna slash dragon same thing uh one tribute dragons both of these at 2400 so typical monarch attack points and then they can also go ahead and remove your opponent's card so very good here <laughs> Crystal Bond. Let's get into some of the spell and traps here. Uh, Crystal Bond actually uh, helps you set up your plays quickly and has also very cute card art, which is just a bonus addition. Um, you can add, you search a Crystal Beast and then you place one from your deck into your spell and trap card zone. Now what makes that really good is it potentially allows you to set up two. 
because you, if you search the Pegasus and then you place one of the ones you don't want to draw, you can go ahead and go ahead and use Pegasus to place another one. So not only have you thinned your deck by two, you've set up two Crystal Beasts in your Spell and Trap Card Zone, as well as you have negated the ability of yourself to draw two bad cards that you wouldn't want to draw. You just want to get those cards out of your deck as soon as possible. Um, speaking of skills though, going back for a second, I talked about Conflict. But one of the skills I would like to see is something that makes these easier to get these bad Crystal Beast cards out of your deck immediately, the ones you don't want to draw. And that would be something like Transcendent Crystals from Duel Links would actually work really, really well. And I think that skill maybe would need to be buffed ever so slightly to make it speed to a competitive, but I think it's very close to being there on its own. Um, you have Rainbow Bridge, which again allows you to search any crystal card. So Rainbow Bridge will search you the Crystal Bond, if that's what you're looking for. It can also search you a variety of these other cards, which we're about to talk about really quickly. Uh, we have Rare Value, which can actually allows you to use your Crystal Beast monsters in your Spell and Trap card zone to go ahead and give you some draw power. Now, draw power is always very, very good in Yu-Gi-Oh! There's a generic rule that if a card says draw two, it's probably a good card. Crystal Beacon. Uh, special some of the crystal beast months from your deck so again a lot of these cards will be focused on setting up your rainbow dragon plays or your other big plays to get out your crystal beast into your field or your graveyard as soon as uh, humanly possible and power of crystal beacon only works if you already have two or more crystal beast cards in your spawn trap card zone so that way th this one is a little bit situational and uh, crystal bond is the one that works no matter what the situation is uh, you have crystal promise which special summons a card so crystal promise goes very very well with ruby carbuncle you have crystal blessing where you can actually recycle two crystal beasts from your graveyard to put those in your spawn trap card zone it's continuous spell so you can see a lot of these cards kind of work together so if i play blessing i can then play promise and if one of those cards is from pegasus i can then get more cards out then i can revalue draw two there's a lot of combos you can play here so the deck can really kind of pop off if you draw the right combination of cards uh crystal conclave is another really good one because if a Crystal Beast monster you control is destroyed, you special summon a Crystal Beast monster from your deck. In addition, it has the effect of sending this face of card to the graveyard and targeting any Crystal Beast card you control and any other card in the field and just bouncing both those cards. Now, if this format is fusion heavy or at least has fusion monsters prevalent like I expect it to be, bouncing fusion monsters is essentially removal. So keep that in mind as you look at cards like this. Then you have Crystal Raigeki which sends a Crystal Beast monster from your Sound Trap card zone to the graveyard to destroy one card your opponent controls. It's really good. It turns your Crystal Beasts that are in your Spell and Trap card zone into removal, essentially, so they can use as fuel, just like the two dragons do, except this is used for anything and does not require a tribute. You just have to set it and then wait. Uh, Rainbow Gravity uh, is one of your cards that triggers your big play here. If you have those seven different Crystal Beast cards, um, on your field and your graveyard, you can special summon the ultimate crystal monster from your deck or graveyard, ignoring its summoning conditions. Now, another potential direction that the skill could go for Crystal Beast, I assume we will get a Crystal Beast skill, could go into the direction of making it easier to summon Rainbow Dragon. So a card like Rainbow Gravity could actually just come up as a skill in order to facilitate that being easier to you don't have to play this card and clog up your deck you can just go ahead and flip it up anytime if it's a skill so this some of these cards that make rainbow dragon easier to summon can also be a direction the skill can go to go ahead and give you that 4000 beater when you need it um you've also got rainbow path which when your opponent monster declares attack you send a crystal beast again you, those crystal beasts in your spawn trap card zone you'll notice this is a theme can be used as fuel and then you can add a rainbow dragon from your deck to your hand it says rainbow dark dragon too but i don't expect we're going to be getting rainbow dark dragon so that's just going to be a dead part of the text if we do get rainbow path which i think we will because it's important to have search capability for rainbow dragon because it is your boss monster uh, you've also got ultimate crystal magic so when your crystal monster just do a battle you can go ahead and just set up your entire graveyard right there and then immediately special summon a ultimate crystal fusion monster from your extra deck. I will talk about the fusion monster as soon as we're done with these last few spells and traps. And then you also have an additional graveyard effect. So like Haunted Shrine, we already have in Speed Duels, it has a graveyard effect. Where you banish from your graveyard and any number of crystal beast monsters, you recycle them into your spell and trap card zone. Which gives you more fuel for your potential plays in the future. Uh, there's also hand destruction. Now the reason I put these with the traps is because it's a quick play spell. 
So it's a very interesting card where each player sends two cards in your hand to the giver, then draws two cards. Now this is very generic. However, I have it with the Crystal Beasts because I think Lucas suggested it here. And it's because it goes very well with what you want to do with the Crystal Beast, right? You get them from your hand, your graveyard immediately, and then you draw two cards to hopefully dig further into setting it up more or getting to your Rainbow Dragon or getting to your important cards like Crystal Bond, which obviously helps you set it up more. I already said that. Uh, then you have Rainbow Life, which is here because Jesse Anderson played this card. Uh, discard a card, and then until the end of the turn, whatever you would take damage, you gain that LP instead. So if you activate Rainbow Life on attack declaration, if your opponent attacks you with a perfectly ultimate Great Moth, and I activate Rainbow Life, I discard a Crystal Beast that I need in the graveyard, then all of a sudden I'm gaining 3,500 life points as well as I've gotten to set up my graveyard a little bit. So that might actually see play. We've got Crystal Pair. When a Crystal Beast monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, place a Crystal Beast from your deck to your spell and trap card zone and you take no battle damage this turn. So again, it helps you set up. However, this one's a little bit situational, so I don't see this one seeing as much play as some of the other setup cards because it's slower and it's more situational, but it's definitely an option I expect them to present us for the Crystal Beast setup. Now let's actually get to... The fusion card, which is probably going to be the real ace monster of the deck, let's be clear here. And the reason for that is, one, it's easier to summon with something like Rainbow Path. And two, it also can be summoned by um, fusing seven Crystal Beast monsters, which I do believe is allowable with ultimate Crystal Magic. And then, um, finally, the big difference here from Rainbow Regular Dragon versus Rainbow Over Dragon is the fact that its quick effect is the one that you can shuffle everything back in the deck. And not only that, it gains attack by banishing Crystal Beast monsters from your graveyard, so it can get really powerful without having anything else on the board. So Rainbow Dragon requires you to sacrifice Crystal Beast you have on the field, whereas Rainbow Over Dragon does not. And other than that, like I talked about, it's a quick effect to tribute this monster and shuffle all cards on the field into the deck. So you can use it on your opponent's turn. When they threaten to remove your rainbow over dragon, you can go ahead and be like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my graveyard and shuffle everything back into the deck. That is very, very, very good. And I am pretty sure. And Rainbow Gravity is also insane with that because it also goes ahead and summons a ultimate crystal monster from your graveyard, ignoring summoning conditions. So that's actually really, really good because you can go ahead and use Overdragon's effect and then Rainbow Gravity it right back out later that turn when the battle phase or on your next turn and then try to win the game from that point forward. And before I go, let me quickly talk about one card that I am deeming unlikely to appear in the box. However, it does require talking about just because of how potentially iconic it is. And that is Rainbow Neos. And the reason it's unlikely, in my opinion, is because I have already said that Neos itself and the Neospatians are unlikely to be in this box. They'll probably be in the Speed Duel set immediately after this box. So... Rainbow Neos has to go in the same category since it needs Neos as a fusion material, but let's look at the card anyway. Uh, once per turn, one of the following effects, send a monster you control to the graveyard to shuffle all monster your opponent controls back into the deck. That's pretty good. Again, it's slow effect though, so maybe not as good as Rainbow Over Dragon. Um, then you send a spell or trap card you control to shuffle all spell or trap cards your opponent controls into the deck or you send a card from the top of your deck to the graveyard to shuffle your opponent's entire graveyard into their deck. So three decent effects depending on what your opponent is playing. So the, the third effect here can also disrupt their graveyard strats if they're on like some zombie shenanigans. So a uh, decent card, just very cool and iconic. So I thought it would be cool to talk about to end off the episode. So that's Crystal Beasts and you guys let me know what you think of crystal beast do you see crystal beast or any of these other archetypes being competitive in speed duels that we have do you see us getting skills that will actually allow us to play archetype specific skills with these decks or are we going to have to make do with just playing conflict with these decks let me know your thoughts and i will see you next time for axel brody we about to get hot in here until then Terra Master out.